Not much longer. Nice stuff. Sets up shot with the up smash. Gets the red stuff. Oh, did you just whip a grab, sir? He said, my boots have way more range than your grab ever will. Don't even get close for comfort like that. I that was so clean. Now, he threw me for a loop because I thought that we were about to see down tilt with the forward tilt. He said, no, sir, here's my up smash. Don't even think about going high over me. And now we got the man, the legend, and probably the most fashionable person in esports, Rodney Conyer, stopping by to talk some smash and commentary. What's good, man? It's been a while. Dude, it hasn't it, man. What the Rockin'. heck? Y'all yeah, know, right, man? I, what can I say, man? It's a smash community, man. I just, you know, gotta <laughs> love it for what it is, you know? I, I, that's, it seems kind of like a yeah. like a bit back. Let's let's dive into that. It's like, it seems like a love-hate se uh, sentence you just put out there. Yeah. What, so what's going on with Smash right now? What's going on with Smash? I mean, there's just a lot of things going on with Smash right now. I think uh, the biggest topic, because I feel like the topics change all the time. I yeah. mean, I know you know just as well as mm -hmm. I do, just working in obviously this field. You know, I think now it's the whole PGR talk, mm -hmm. who's getting ranked. Uh, how important is the PGR? And it's very important, by the way, not to, you know, throw anything off or, you know, whatever. The PGR yeah. obviously is very important. We yeah, got to so, rank these players. So bre bre break it down. Why, why is it so for, for anybody that might just be tuned in, doesn't really dive deep into the scene, like, yeah. why, why is this uh, a super important thing? Why is this a big talk right now? Well, I, for a multitude of reasons. Um, I think from a viewer standpoint, if you like seeing your favorite players at tournaments traveling the world, then it's probably a great idea to pay some attention and just show some love to the PGR. Mm -hmm. It just helps rank our players. And then on top of that, it lets sponsors know who's the best in the world. They probably yeah. want to sponsor that yeah. guy or girl. And, you know, obviously, who's the worst? So I think that's the best thing, uh, you know, about the PGR right now. But I know, of course, it gets flack because no ranking system is perfect. Yeah, Come on yeah, out. Yeah. I think we all know that. Yeah, so I, I want to I want to talk about that. Like, so you, you bring up sponsors in that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been, I've, been, I've been in the, I was in the scene for a bit. I jumped off, did some a lot of Rocket League stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's you know I'm 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 not in, as in tune with what the community's feeling right now. And I know there's always just been the FGC in general yeah. been a bit of resistance mm -hmm. to to going you know to that that sponsorship heavy giving away our, our rights as grassroots kind of thing. Is that still the vibe going on right now? Uh, or is there a little bit of lenience kind of kind of pushing us way in? I think there's more Ultimate. there's more in lenience, and I think the biggest example of that would be like Adrenaline. So so like, for instance, the typical Smash marketing is like, come out to Rod and Brody's Smash Bros Extravaganza mm -hmm. featuring uh, Zurich and Carl with $10,000 in pot. Like, it needs to be in bright neon letters for people to yeah. get it. But when we got events like Adrenaline, traditional esports events, yeah. we're hosting these games, blah, blah, blah. But then we're also bringing in Smash on the side as well, too, mm -hmm. just to kind of, you know, familiarize the audience with us. So we're starting to get like a hybrid, like this best, best of both worlds type of thing. Yeah. So speaking of just like the evolution of, of the community, then what's the evolution of the game look like? It's been I, I, 18 years now for, for Smash Brothers, oh I goodness. think, since since like Melee or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like the scene's been around for a long time. Yeah. Right. So what's the, what's the game uh, just looking like? What's the, the evolution? Uh, are we seeing a lot more variety, especially with Ultimate and the characters, you know, because there's there's so many characters now? Mm -hmm. Or is it still kind of narrowing its way down to a couple top-tier characters that people gravitate to? Well, I, I think, okay, I mean, there's a lot of different aspects that you have to kind of factor into that. You know, obviously, the roster sizes between Melee and Ultimate, yeah. two very, very different sizes and rosters. Um, I still think, and I know you, we talked about this last time, um, when it comes to Ultimate, we thought that we were going to get like those three. Like, remember, we were guessing yeah, yeah, last, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's <laughs> not, happening. It, not happening. I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's good, right? It's good. Yes, yeah, yeah. it keeps the game fresh. Obviously, it keeps the game alive and, and so on and so forth. But the great thing about me uh, Melee, though, is that you have those fan favorites. Yeah. And what really pushes Melee are those storylines, you know, that have been told and retold and redone over mm -hmm. the last 18 years. Yeah, so I, I want to get it, I want to get in you in just a second, but I just want to just kind of capture. Uh, yeah, I want to I want to talk about your life, see what's going on with you. But uh, I just want to talk first uh, quickly about just the the scene. So we, you know, for melee, you know, we got your dominant play, uh, guys like you know Hunger Box and that, and then for um, Smash Four for a while we had Zero mm -hmm. just dominate. Are we seeing that now with Ultimate, or is it has it been kind of just a uh, you know few players rotating through who's that dominant spot? Um, I I still think undoubtedly MK Leo is the best. Okay. Um, but that's not a shot at like Sam Sor or yeah, Tweak or yeah, Mars yeah. or anything like that because well, I, mean, I feel like I'm hearing more of those names right, right. overall right well and another thing is that MK Leo is going to a lot of tournaments overseas as well and okay, so you figure yeah. when a lot of those tournaments are happening I'm in bed I'm watching the watch yeah. Yeah, that's right but you know uh Samsora and Morris just had a, a just a really strong set um, I believe at DreamHack Atlanta mm -hmm. just a couple weekends ago. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we get these, again, these same faces all the time. It's really hard to pinpoint who's the best when you just keep getting these dominant forces in top eight. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, let's, 
let's talk about dominant forces on the other side, the voices behind it. Uh -oh. That's as you guys, right? You know, doing the commentary. Is that, is that us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's right. So I want to I want to dive in. Just how's how's everything going? We we talked recently mm -hmm. um, before you you were doing some live stuff on Twitter, on Instagram and stuff, mm -hmm. and we were able to chat before. I just want to talk a bit more, looking from two different scenes. Again, from more of a grassroots mm -hmm. perspective, and then from from my side where it's like we're getting you know that first party developer support. Mm -hmm. What the scenes look like when it comes to commentary? Because I know you've just been you've been putting a lot of thoughts out there right now. Mm -hmm. So what's the commentary scene looking like for you in, in, in Smash right now? Uh, I mean, commentary for me, I'm in a pretty pretty decent spot right now. Yeah. I, I think, I, I mean, I'm here. No, yeah, no yeah, but yeah, right. all, all jokes aside, no, I'm, I'm in an okay spot. But I, I've seen a lot of tweets from others, you know, wishing that possibly things would go better for them okay. or, you know, are they not making the right moves? Are they are? I mean, I think, you know, we talked about it. It's all subjective and it all mm -hmm. comes down to just the person at hand, yeah, you know? Yeah. What works best for me on commentary obviously might not work best for you, Brody, and so on yeah, and yeah. so forth. But um, I think... In Smash commentary, though, there is more complaining, I think, from the commentators coming up than okay. there is actual work sometimes being put in. What are the, what are the complaints, in. though? Like, what, what, are the, what are they complaining about right well, now? Well, the, the complaints are that, like, they're not getting blocks at certain events. You know, okay. things like that. But you know, you started out in Smash. Yeah. You know that in, in order to really be in the room when it happens, you have to be in the room when it well, happens. You gotta, you gotta be there, you gotta you be gotta doing be, it. Yeah. You gotta be there, and we're just not getting a lot of that. But you know what that stems from? Okay. That stems from... Um, a lot of guys sometimes who live on the coast who have just these opportunities in their backyard, sometimes they don't really understand that they have to travel. But if you and I were in a yeah, band, yeah, you know, yeah. we talked about singing, let's say you and I are in a band, why would I only want to perform just where I'm from? Wouldn't I want to take this show on the Oh, road? yeah, you want, you want to capitalize the, the audience that you're getting into, right? Like, That's right. If, if you're just sitting in, 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 your, in your own backyard, first off, there's a bunch of people that maybe hear of you, but they never get to meet you. And I think a big yeah. part of any esports in general is community, right? Mm -hmm. And if, if you're a commentator that maybe thinks you're better than the whole other half of the country or the continent or whatever, mm -hmm. or even the rest of the world, it's like, are they really going to be behind you and supporting you that much, right? They're going to be right. more hype when another guy that they've met mm -hmm. gets on that commentary mic right. and starts talking, right? That's so, right. so is it more? Is it, it's it's just these people. You feel like the, there's a bit of a lack of a work ethic, I guess, being put in. There, there is a lack of work ethic. In some of the bigger states, you know, obviously mm -hmm. they have more opportunities in esports, like the East and, and West Coast yeah, predominantly. Yeah. But I do think that in order to really yeah, make I it, I haven't seen many Utah World Finals, you know. Yeah, <laughs> one day, right? But, you know, in, in order to, I feel like, really establish yourself in any sort of, you know, performing art, you, yeah. have, you have to be places. And if you're not willing to put your own money up, because that's an investment too. Yeah. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. you're investing time instead of money. Mm -hmm. If you're not, you know, willing to put that part of yourself aside to get out and travel. This is probably not the right career for so, you. I'm also qu I'm questioning because you say you gotta you gotta put a, like a lot of it's a time, and I feel like mm -hmm. in a lot of grassroots that was very true. Like yes. especially you know for me getting into commentary too, mm -hmm. it was the first you know five six months I was just doing it for fun. You know That's I was right. just chilling. I was online. Just I'm like this is great. This is fun mm -hmm. until I was able to get you know more consistent gigs mm -hmm. um, with Rocket League and that um, where you know I'm being flown out. I'm being paid now mm -hmm. uh, properly in that. But I feel like uh, with Smash it's still kind of it's still in that grassroots, and I feel like it's still grassroots when it comes to the commentary mm -hmm. aspect too, where it's not like insane amounts of pay, people are still having to sacrifice their time mm -hmm. and not making, is that is that true? Is that is a Smash still not kind of being like respected when it comes to the commentary and the work that's going into it? I think so, but I think uh, the biggest issue is just developer support, you know, and yeah. I, I know we've talked about this and no matter what, it just always seems to zero back around to that. The yeah. great thing about some of the other esports is that you have like the part in your career where grassroots, 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 and boom, I get picked up by the yeah, game, yeah. good. But in, you know, Smash, there's really no ceiling. You know, everybody's kind of on the same level until Nintendo drops that, hey, this is where these guys are, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is where these guys are, and you guys can duke it out Mortal Kombat style uh -huh. to figure out who wants to be where, right? Yeah. yeah so. so so for the Smash, what's gonna what's gonna take like is there does it look like Nintendo's starting to jump in yes. at all? It does. So, yes, so that's a good does. sign. Mm -hmm. The light at the end of the tunnel is starting to show up, right? <laughs> so but but what's it gonna take from the commentators to make that? Because I've heard that it's like, again, a lot of people aren't we talked about this before off so uh, show, so I'll reiterate it here. We talked about a lot of the commentators not knowing their value right. and the worth that, that they can put into this mm -hmm. and I think sometimes that can hurt even some of the other smaller guys because mm -hmm. they try to go into it and they ask for you know I want this to, to make sure I'm covered for this mm -hmm. but then the people putting the events on are like well no I can get this other commentator that's good for really really cheap or whatever mm -hmm. um, and do you think that's hurting the scene as a whole too and that will change with Nintendo or is it gonna be on the commentators to actually step up and say to Nintendo hey when you come in, this is what we need to make sure the whole ecosystem is sustainable. Now, from what I've heard, you know, and of course, I don't want to cite too many sources yeah, because course. I don't yeah, want yeah. the Illuminati to Break come get Break the rumors. Get... Break the rumors. Right. No, but, you know, the guys who do work with Nintendo making mm -hmm. pretty okay money. Yeah. 
I mean, this is, you know, this is a corporation. You yeah, know. of course. Um, Nintendo's got a couple dollars. Just a, a couple. <laughs> you know, Mario made him a few bucks. Yeah, but, you know. Um, I, I think what it, it really is, is, is the second part. We, as commentators, do need to bring it back around and really work with each other. Okay. You know, let events know, like, hey, you know, some of us are, are the best in the business. And, yeah, you could hire X, Y, and Z. They're really good. Obviously, they're not some of us for a reason, career-wise. Mm -hmm. Why don't we just take a couple tournaments off and just let them see viewership-wise how it goes, you know, yeah, if there's yeah. going to be a dip or, you know, a rise. And if there's a dip, then that's, like, the biggest argument right there for your worth. I'm a firm believer in that. Some of my other friends not really trying to pull that, but, you know, we're all different. Yeah. So I, I just, I'm just i just curious. We're almost out of time. So I'm just curious now for you as a commentator, have you ever thought about jumping into some other games and, like, practicing your skill there? What other games? Or, do you, or is there enough coming up in, in the Smash scene right now that you'll be, you'll be good? Well, okay, so... I do like Smash a lot, uh, but... I mean, who doesn't, really? I'm with right. you. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, just four people in a room talking trash at the same time. Let's just all duke it out. But no, seriously, um, I like, obviously, a lot of other fighting games, Mortal Kombat, that type yeah. of stuff, too. But if there was ever... You know, it's funny that you do Rocket League. If there was ever another eSport I would jump into, it would probably be Rocket League. I just caught, like, a yeah, glimpse of it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I catch a glimpse of it and just, you know, so much in, in earshot at the DreamHacks. I'm just like... These guys look like they're having fun. It's hype, you know? yeah. And if you're not having fun with, with, with whatever you're doing, you're not doing it right. Yeah. I, I would say that's, I mean, that's, it makes sense. And I think that's the reason I gravitated toward it too. There is a lot of crossover, actually. Yeah. A lot of the guys, I was actually in the studio yeah. uh, the other day at the RLC Studios. We, a guy busted out Dolphin, we started playing Melee. Are you right? serious? Like, yeah, no, no, yeah. It's like, oh, there is oh, a God. lot of crossover and it's super sick. It's got that grassroots feel with that first party support. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you want, if you want some tips and tricks, I'm, I'm down to help you out, man. Yeah, there might, we might be crossing we'll over here pretty soon. All right. Yeah, cool. Man. Anyways, we got to bounce. Thank you so much for chilling, dude. It's always a blast to have you on. Thank you for having me.